I was in a, a, a situation whereas, you know, I had left high school early. So now I'm trying to get my thing back together. I'm trying to get back on the right track. I'm trying to uh, enroll myself in a program where you get your high school diploma and you get a little bachelor deg bachelor's degree and you know college bachelor's degree at the same time. One particular night I was going to night school and um, you know, uh, Jizzle, me and Jizzle was together and he was like, um, hey man, why don't you come to the studio with me tonight? You know what I mean? We got some things going down. And I was like, nah, you know, I'm trying to do the school thing. I got two absences already, you know, one more absent and I get kicked out of the program. I got to start all over. I can't do that, man. You sure you don't want to come to the studio with me? I'm telling you, we got, nah, I got to go to school. So I went to school. He went to the studio. The next day, uh, we met as we usually do for our normal uh, game of chess, our chess, uh, you know, day. Um, as we were playing chess, he was like, um, why don't you check out what we did in the studio last night? And he puts on the tape, and on the tape is Protect Your Neck. Now, when I heard Protect Your Neck, I knew I was never going back to school again. <laughs> What I heard, I knew was so promising. It was something that was new, it was something that was fresh. It was something that hip hop needed. And I knew automatically when I heard that song that it was definitely gonna be successful. And, you know, it's been, you know, looking forward ever since. So when it came down to uh, the mystery of chess boxing now later on, you know, this is when I decided to uh, take the art form of rhyming a little bit more serious. You know, I started, you know, uh, striving to construct my own rhymes. Now, let me write something down on paper and, and see if I really got the talent to really do this, okay? So I wrote down some thoughts that I had and I took them to Jizzle on, on paper. Gave him the paper. What you think about this? He read it. He said, you wrote this. I said, yeah, I wrote that. He was like, wow. If you can learn how to say that, you got a job. <laughs> they didn't really need another ninth member. I mean, those eight MCs of Wu-Tang was far more than enough to be successful. They didn't need me, you know what I mean? But RZA being who he is and and and, and uh, the, the musical coordinator of everything left this particular track for who was ever gonna make this last slot to be a part of this project, here's your chance. Now, many many other MCs had uh, threw their darts that night. You know, my particular dart, I guess he judged it and said this was the one that was gonna make it because there were other MCs there that threw darts that night, but I guess this one fit the criteria of what he was looking for and the rest is history. I mean, everything, at that stage was totally a learning experience for me. I had no idea of, of uh, what this business and industry was about. I was only a fan of the music. I've only been a fan of music since I was able to know what music was. All kinds of music I've been a fan of, but I had no idea of what this musical industry was about at that time so i was blessed to have been a part of the movement but i was actually a student of everything that was happening because i didn't know what it took to make an album cover what did it take for the whole campaign of everything that we were doing to be successful all the, the all the record in-store signings all the Everything was a new experience to me and I was just happy to be a part of it I was blessed to be a part of it and, and my brothers welcomed me with open arms and you know Like I said the rest is history. I'm, I'm still here today uh, Based on that one rhyme <laughs> You know what I mean? And you know, that's a blessing